Hey guys, we're going to be covering factum theor factor theorem in this session. Um, it's very similar to remainder theorem. So here we go. So the general idea is that x minus a will be a factor of p of x if and only if, if p of a equals zero. Now what that means basically is um, it's exactly the same thing as the remainder theorem, only if your remainder is zero, then it's a factor of p of x. All right. Uh, best done with a couple of examples. So our question is, show that x plus 1 is a factor of x to the power of 4 minus x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 5. So, just like how we did in the remainder theorem, we're going to do it the same thing in here for the factor theorem. So we're going to go x plus 1 equals 0, which means x is equal to negative 1. Now, we need to find what f of negative 1 is. And if f of negative 1 equals 0, then x plus 1 is a factor. So f of negative 1 would equal negative 1 to the power of 4 minus negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 5. Simplifying this, we should get 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 2 and minus 1 is plus 2 minus 5. Now, adding this up, it equals 0. Because it equals 0, because the remainder is equal to 0, therefore, we can say that x plus 1 is, in fact, a factor of the function. Now, sometimes you might just be given a function by itself, and you have to figure out what your factors are. And we'll have a look at an example like that. So an example of this type of question would be determine the factors of x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now, this is a cubic, and the cubic has a coefficient of 1. So the x cubed has a coefficient of 1. So I know that if I factorize this, it should look something like x minus a, x minus b, and x minus c. Now you might be wondering about the minus signs, but you know, it, it does make sense in the end because, um, you know, if you have plus, then B would be, for example, if A is, a, a is actually positive um, 1, then the factor would be X minus 1 and so on. Okay? So, anyway, let's just, let's just try with the example, try one example. So, I'm going to try out X minus 1. Now, if I use X minus 1, I know that X minus 1 equals 0, therefore X is equal to 1. So, I need to substitute or find what f of 1 is. So I'm going to write down what f of x is, uh, which is just the question itself. And now I want to figure out what f of 1 is. f of 1, it e equals 1 cubed plus 6 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 10. And this equals, we got 1 plus 6 plus 3 minus 10 which is 0. This means that x minus 1 x minus 1 is a factor. Now I need to figure out the other two factors. But the one thing I know about um, the constant, the, particularly the minus 10, is if I do negative a multiplied by negative b multiplied by negative c, I should get negative 10. So in other words, if I do, I'm just going to write that down here. So negative a times negative b times negative c should equal negative 10. Now I already figured out what the value of a is. It's going to be just 1. Well, so negative 1. Negative 1 times negative b times negative c equals negative 10. Which means, if I simplify the left-hand side, I'd actually get BC is equal to 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list down all the um, possible combinations of numbers that multiply to 10. So I've got 5 times 2, I've got negative 5 times negative 2, and I've got one, 10 times positive 1, and I have negative 10 times negative 1. So these are the four possible combinations that I could have for the last two numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out the first one, which is 5, so f of 5. 
Now f of 5, if I substitute everything, I've got 5 cubed plus 6 times 5 squared plus 3 times 5 minus 10. Now I can straight away look at this number and see that because of 5 cubed it's 125, this is not equal to 0 because of that 5 cubed, it's, such, it's 125 and there's only 1 minus 10 there. So therefore the 5 times 2 combination is not going to work. So x minus 5 is not a factor. So obviously the next one I'm going to try is f of negative 5. So in this case I've got negative 5 cubed plus 6 times negative 5 squared plus 3 times negative 5 minus 10. Now this actually equals to 0, which means negative 5 times negative 2 is equal to 10. So because f of negative 5 is equal to 0, I can say that x plus 5 is a factor. So in other words, negative 5 times negative 2 equals positive 10. So if x plus 5 is a factor, the other factor must be x plus 2. So the three factors, the three factors are x minus 1, x plus 5, and the last one, which is x plus 2. Okay, guys, there is one other way of doing this as well. Once you find the first factor is by using long division, and I'm going to show that in the next slide. But before I do that, um, what you guys need to know is that this is how you use the factor theorem to figure out factors for a polynomial. But I'm going to show you that other method with long division as well, just so that you have another skill. So I'm starting the problem from halfway. So once we've figured out what, that x minus 1 is a factor, then what we can do is we can do long division. So I can set it up like this and then carry out long division. Now, guys, at this point, I'm assuming that you've already watched the long division video in this series and you know how to do long division. So I'm just going to fly through this. I've got x squared as the first multiplier. So it's going to be x cubed minus x squared. Subtracting it, I'm going to get 6x squared. Take away negative x squared is 7x squared. I've got the 3x moving down. Now I need to multiply this by 7x. So I've got 7x squared minus 7x and of course subtracting I'm gonna get 0 3x minus minus 7x is 10x bring down to minus 10 and of course I need to multiply this by positive 10 to get 10x minus 10 and that is equal to 0 so I'm sorry I had to rush through this but hopefully you've done long division before so you can kinda of see what's happening here so from this point I could rewrite the polynomial as x minus 1 times x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now, x squared plus 7x plus 10, I can factorize further. I can factorize it to x plus 5 times x plus 2. So as you can see, the x squared plus 7x plus 10 is what we're multiplying by here, and therefore I can factorize it further. All right, guys, so... With factor, uh, factor theorem, you've got to remember that the remainder has to be zero. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, then you could always find one factor, use long division and figure out what the other factors are, and then factorize them factorize them to figure out what the final three factors are. Okay, um, that's all from this video. Thank you for watching.